Welcome back, I'm Curtis Smith. In northern and southern Mexico, we have very different climates. We have a lot of differences in our landscapes. But you know, there are a lot of questions county agents get that are the same in the north and the south, but the answers are a little bit different. We're here in Doniana County with John White. He's the co-host of this television show, but he's also the Doniana County agent, and you get a lot of questions about a lot of plants, which be the same questions we get throughout the state. One right. of the plants is this one. Our pampas grass here is a plant that's uh, utilized throughout a lot of the state, and the big question is whether to shear it back or not to shear it Doesn't back. Doesn't matter where a county agent is in the state, they're gonna be asked the same question. Should I cut it back or should I not cut it back? What's your answer? Well, in our uh, southern climate here, a lot of times, as this plant exhibits, we don't go completely dormant. So we'll have a lot of green uh, foliage on it still. Uh, real cold winters, it will completely brown out, and then we do shave them back. But when they're in this kind of uh, half green, half half brown stage, uh, they can kind of go either way. They can take a It's a grass. They can right. mow it back if they want. We mow grass all the time. Right. In the north, it's going to turn brown. And so before it starts greening up or just as it starts greening in spring, we need to cut it back. But we don't want to cut too deep in and cut the crown. Right. And, and you want to remember with this grass, we do have a, a serrated edge on it. So it is real sharp. So use your gloves on it. <laughs> as you cut it, it may cut you. That's right. The chainsaw is a good tool to use on this as well. <laughs> what do you recommend for fire on this one? For fire, this one, uh, is one unfortunately that we do see a lot of uh, vandalism where people throw matches into uh -huh. it and stuff. Well, and some so people actually be, prune it back by careful. burning it. it back, that can do a lot of damage. Right. And so that's one way that I'd rec recommend you don't do it. Right. Now we've got another plant. That you, I know in the north and the south we get the same question, but I know the answer is different. Let's go take a look at that over here. Okay. Well, John, we get questions about roses all over the state. One of the questions is asked of all the county agents is. When do I prune my roses? We get right. a different answer here than we do in northern New Mexico. Right. When do you prune your roses? Roses here are pruned usually around the latter part of February, and uh, our last freeze is usually around the 1st of uh, April, somewhere in that neighborhood. So it gives the plant a chance to get some, some growth back on and bloom before the hot weather really moves in. Yeah, here's good evidence that there's a difference. You're not going to find nice, supple flowers on roses north but here in the southern part, you've got still nice flowers. And yeah, still putting green growth on. Yeah, still healthy. We've got leaves, but they've been shut down in the north. What we do up north, and I use a rule of thumb that says prune them within about a month of the last freeze. And so you did time the last freeze for that. As we go further north, the last freeze is later, and everyone in their own community should determine when their last freeze, expected last freeze is. You never know when it's going to be, but when right. it's expected. And you use that as your rule of thumb for when to prune. And so here, earlier, up north, later, Albuquerque, mid-March is the right. first time you should prune. And as we go further north, even later than that. Okay, and you've got a few other things. I think you've got a sample of a bug we ought to look at. That's right, common this time of year, or at least seen a lot this time of year. Hidden the rest of the year. Let's go take a look at that. Okay. Curtis, the problem that we uh, see a lot here in the area is the uh, one of these, ah, and uh, yeah. common on a lot of our uh, woody ornamentals here. That's is this a problem up north? It is indeed. This is the bagworm. So this is something that is common. Probably the differences in answers is going to be timing of control, but maybe not even in that. All right now, this is a true bagworm, whereas uh, here, at least in the southern part of the state, we have a, another insect that hits the trees that has a real webby um, casing around it, and a lot of people call that bagworm when it's actually a webworm. That's a webworm. This one is the bagworm. It lives inside the bag. The female never leaves it. She lays her eggs and dies there. And the eggs hatch out, and the little worms crawl around, feeding on leaves, making a new bag with leaves on the outside to camouflage it, so it's hard right. to see in the summer. And a lot of times those are made up of leaf material off the plant that right, actually right comes off, off of. The very plant it's on, yeah. Now, what do you recommend to do? Well, as far as uh, this time of year, with our trees starting to go uh, deciduous, we can just pull those off, dispose of them in a garbage can or a dumpster or whatever. Uh, of course, as the trees are in leaf and these are on it and feeding, uh, you need to go with a pesticide, either organic or inorganic, that is labeled for the use of on Lepidopterus type insects. Okay, good. John, thank you. That's the same answer we get anywhere else. Timing may be a little different, but same answer. So. We've got a few other things we'll talk about later in the show that are similarities between North and South. Right. So thank you for this section. 
See you in a little cars. while. All right.